Everyone, hi. Bruce Markson, LCSW, Sunridge of Nevada, coming at you with another musical breakdown. Before I begin, it's a little bit about myself. I received my master's in social work at the University of Georgia over 25 years ago. And upon receiving my master's, I had to do a two-year post-master's residency, essentially, and then take a national exam. I have worked with patients from 3 to 83 in all kinds of settings, inpatient, outpatient, emergency rooms, and I have assessed thousands of them. I've also done thousands of assessments where I've worked with patients to understand what was their issues going forward with mental illness, and I've also made visits to the home thousands of times because that gives me a great understanding of what goes on in someone's life by going to their home. I have also testified in court hundreds of times about mental health issues regarding patients and what is the steps to go forward with them. In addition, I've also done dozens of trainings, primarily in law enforcement, on how to work better with the mentally ill. And finally, every two years, I have to get close to 40 what's called CEU credits, so I stay current in my field and know what's going on. Okay, the song we picked tonight is just unbelievable. It's it's called Therapy Session by NF. And quite frankly, once we saw the song title, how could I say no? It's perfect first. It's a great song. I want to break it down. Now, as I explained before, I'm only going to take the lines that I find clinically relevant, break it down, then I'll say I'm going back so you can follow along from the beginning to the end of the song. Here we go. We've never met, but I swear you know who I am. Essentially, what the audience is saying to him is, I feel like you're talking to me. This is, I understand that line very well because as a clinical social worker, I've had people say that to me. When I've done trainings, group therapy, individual therapy, I feel like you're talking to me. Like There could be 50 people in the room, but you're, it's almost like I'm naked and you're, you figured me out and you understand me. And that's what that fan is saying to Nate. I feel like you're talking to me in a sea of 15,000 people he's relating, which is a tremendous compliment. And it goes, that's real for me, Nate. You do not understand. It's crazy for me. It's hard at first for an artist to understand that when it becomes personal that you have saved my life. We've gotten comments like that from our people that have said things to us like, Bruce, wow, you know, I was, I was feeling suicidal. I was so depressed. Couldn't get out of bed. I have so many problems at home. But you've reached me. You've done something for me. You've given me a ray of light. Okay, next line. Kids hit me up, say they're slitting their wrist on they wrist on the daily. This music is more than you think. It is. It's literally life or death to them. When he says slitting their wrist daily, oh, unfortunately, I can relate to that. That's what I see a lot in my practice. So when the kid says that to him, it is life to him. I read the comments from this song and other songs. I'm not on his level. I'm not going to pretend that I am. But I I know what he's talking about when people share things with you that you're like stunned that you would share that on a public forum. And his people, his fan base is huge. And they're not afraid to share. When someone's not afraid to share like that, it's because they feel it's relatable. You're not making fun of them. You're not talking down to them. And that's essentially what great therapy is when you have that kind of connection with the therapist. You feel you can share things and it's not going to come back to bite you. So when that person says that this music is more than you think, I get it. It is life or death to these people that are going to his concerts and listening to his music. All right, next lines. There's several of them I liked. He goes, how do you picture me, huh? Want me to smile? You want me to laugh? You want me to walk on the stage with a smile on my face? Yeah. But see, what he's saying is, I'm going out there and give you what you want. And a million things are going through my head. Am I going to do something tonight that's going to make someone kill themselves or hurt themselves? Or someone going to say to me, you you saved my life, Nate? It's more than just music. It's almost like a, a symbiotic relationship between the fans and Nate. You know, they're literally, literally every single word he's saying, every song that he sings is it's not just music, it's life or death. And when you get that kind of responsibility put on you, it's powerful. Even when I respond back to the comments that people send to us, I got to think sometimes I got to be careful what I say and how I say it 
to make sure I'm reaching the person in the appropriate way. And sometimes it takes some time. I'm not on his level again, but I get where he's coming from. What role am I playing? What role am I playing? Because clearly he brings it. This song alone had 60 million views. So clearly he is relatable to his audience. Then going forward, the lines are, how are you going to write me and tell me you slaughtered my family? That's just a glimpse to the stuff that gets sent to me. He, that line, and he holds up, there's a, there's a scene in the video where he holds, you see it on, on, like on the laptop. That actually happened to him. Someone actually wrote, you'll slaughter my family. That's the price, unfortunately, that you pay, and it's very predictable because when you have people that can say anything to you, sometimes they say things to you that are heinous. Every celebrity goes through that where things are said to them that are like shocking and like, you're going to slaughter my family, huh? But that's what you have to put up with when you're reaching so many people and you're a public target. But I get the like, you read something like that and if you have small children, like, what, is this guy serious? Because today you don't really know what's going to happen out there. It's a very, very scary feeling. And that's why you need someone to talk to, to go over these things in your head, to get reassurance that you're not alone, you're not on an island. All right, chorus, now verse two. He talks about this situation, and I'm sure this has happened to him multiple times. This girl at the show looked me in the face and told me her life's full of drama. Yeah. Said her dad is abusive, apparently he likes to beat on her mama. I got so angry inside, I wanted to tell her to give me his number. What are you going to do with it, right? You're going to hit him up, then he'll start hitting her harder. That's real. That's real. It's true. You know, someone says something to you like that, you know, hey, Nate, you know, in my, in my family life, in my life, and it could come from an email, direct message, a letter. People say this to him, I'm sure. My father beats up my mother. It's horrible living at home. It's, it's terrible. Since his music is so relatable to his audience, which it is, when you talk about real things, then this is what your fans are going to say to you. When you're honest, when it's real, when it's something about personal, what you're going through, what kids today are dealing with, they're going to open up and they're going to share with you. He is aware that he can only do so much with a horrible story, and that's the truth. What is he going to do? Call the guy? Threaten him? Who are you? Who are you? Who are you? You know what I'm going to do now? Tonight, I wasn't going to beat her up. I'm going to beat her up three times as hard in your memory, in your honor. And then I'll send you pictures if you like. Oh, you got that from me. Oh, wait. Oh, my daughter said that to you? She needs a licking too. So sometimes you want to do good and you, you stick your finger in the socket and all you do is you get yourself burned and everyone around you. Horrible knowledge that you, this is what you're being entrusted with. Very scary. Tremendous credit to this guy for what he goes through. Next, going down further, imagine someone looking at you and saying, your music, the reason that they are alive. Sometimes I don't know how to handle it. You notice in this song how many times people have said this to him so far? You're keeping me alive. Your music is what's keeping me going. Without you, I don't know how I would handle it. Wow. When you talk about something real, this is what's going to happen, and I'm sure it's hard to handle. What do, what do you do when you get messages like this? Hundreds of them, probably dozens a week. I'm being beaten. I'm, I'm cutting on myself. My parents fight in front of me. My mother got smacked in the mouth so hard, blood flew everywhere. I have my hands over my ears. I don't want to hear the screaming, the shouting. My, my parents are detached. I'm cutting on myself for attention. This is what he's hearing because this is what his audience is going through, and he is relatable to his audience over what he's went through. This is what's going to happen. He's created, you know, not on his own, you know, not, you know, incidentally, a tsunami of emotions. That's what makes his music so amazing. Then it goes like this. You see me walk on these stages, but I have no, but have no idea what I'm dealing with after it. Nah. Yeah. How do you turn it off after you're done? It's not so easy. You know, people think, you know, the artists, and this happens a lot with the musicians that we've covered, they didn't they couldn't separate the music from life. So that they had to be the they had to be the music. They had to have the girls and the drugs and the guns and the violence live the life. But that wasn't who they were. And the people that were around them used and abused them and took advantage of them. 
But he walks off the stage. I was just talking about this with my agent slash producer. You really want to do is like go home. You got a three year old. Make sure he, you know, she's he's covered with a blanket. Give him a kiss. You know, is honey? Is there milk in the fridge? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll get the dry cleaning tomorrow. Yeah, I promise. I'll take him to the play date. You know, you want to lay down. You want to kick back. You want to watch some TV with your wife or your husband. Just relax. You know, have a quiet meal. Whew, wow, tonight was wild. And just kind of decompress. And all of a sudden he's saying, like, how do you turn this off when you walk off the stage? It's not easy. It's not. Sometimes we've done live streams where people said things that were like, blow, blow me away. Like, and I had to react like, you know, bam, bam, bam. It's like a boxing match. You got to respond to it immediately. People say things that like kind of shock us sometimes. And I'm a veteran, so to speak, of counseling. This guy's getting hit with this every time he goes on stage, every time he releases an album or video. It's not easy. Give the guy a lot, a lot of credit. All right, going forward, here are the lines. Three lines which I really liked. But honestly, I feel like nobody knows me. I'm trying to deal with depression. I'm trying to deal with the pressure. Great honesty, perspective, and insight. Because no one does know you. They think they know you, but they never do. And you deal with the depression and you deal with the pressure. And for a lot of people, it's not easy and they crack up and they can't sustain it. They can't sustain their career because it becomes too much. I get what he's saying. You don't know who I am. Nobody knows me. I'm dealing with my own depression and my own pressure. He's being honest about it. I go through depression and go through bouts of up and down. And now I got to deal with this stuff on top of that. It's not easy. Then a little further, he goes like this. I got some things in my life, my life. I know I should let it, let him go, let him go. Let me jot it down, jot it down. What, what is he saying this for? He's opening up because he's saying I've had some very, he's had some very difficult issues in his past. I didn't know this till I read his bio and went through him. His parents divorced. He was raised by his mother until the father had to take him away because the mom's boyfriend was abusing him. And his mother died from an overdose in 2009, leading to a song, dedicating the song, How Could You Leave Us, to her in, in, her, in her memory. I'm sure he's had tons of questions about his childhood and his teenage years. Has to. He's gone through a lot, some severe, severe issues that makes me understand him on a deeper level now. Wow. He, he's not, not, doesn't just like not talk the talk, he's walked the walk and dealing with dysfunction, PTSD, trauma, and having to deal with parental issues, you know, parental problems. It's not easy. And you carry that shrapnel with you as you get older. To his guts, he talks about it. Then he goes in the chorus, therapy, therapy session, therapy, therapy session. And, he, you know, he does, the video is really, really good. You got the emotionally disengaged family with like the kabuki masks on, the kids are cutting, the domestic violence environment, girl holding her hands over the years, all relatable. That's all stuff I deal with. That's all stuff that not that I've seen necessarily, but I've heard in counseling. And what he's bringing up is what his fans are bringing up, what he probably experienced himself growing up. Then in verse 3, he goes, he shows a lot of insight. He goes, I know I handle some things immaturely. I know that I need to grow in maturity. Okay, good line. Good. I liked how he you know, worded those two lines. I ain't going to walk on these stages in front of these people and act like I live my life perfectly. That doesn't work for me. Christian is not the definition of what perfect means. Woo. Boy, that says a lot. He shows a sense of maturity and to me and self-awareness. This comes across in his lyrics and how he relates to his audience. I'm a work in progress. I'm trying to do the best I can. I have been through what you're dealing with. That is the connection. What you've experienced, I've experienced. And I have my Christian faith and that's my bedrock, but I bounce off it all the time. Uh, you know, just let me say for myself as being someone who's Jewish, and dealing with Judaism, I have to bounce that off all the time myself with things I've experienced, things I've seen, things I've dealt with. Am I a good person? You know, am I? And, and to me, I'm still a work in progress. So kudos to Nate to trying to understand that and saying, yeah, I have a label. I am Christian. But boy, am I still going through things in my own life. And 
this is why the song works so well, because he's learning about himself via therapy and dealing with sharing and being vulnerable. That's a hard thing to do in therapy. That's one of the things that when you go to therapy, you got to shed your skin and shed your past and open up. And for a lot of people, how many times have I had what they call like it would call an initial assessment? People come in, why are you here today, sir? Why are you here today, miss? They share, they talk, and I say, this is your problem. This is your issue. This is what you have to work on. And they go like this. And I say, from now on, you can never say, you don't know why you have issues. And what do they say? Thank you very much. This has been incredibly helpful. And they never come back again because they don't want to confront what really is the truth now. Now they can't hide behind drugs and alcohol, promiscuity, overeating, terrible career choices, financial mistakes. Now they know. Now they know the issues of why they had mental health problems and they don't want to deal with it. They, go, they run right back to where they came from because it's scary. To this guy's credit, he's grappling with himself, himself, and that's what makes the song so rich and so perfect and so open and so engaging. Okay, going forward, you want to know what it's like if you met me in person? Meet me in person? Met me in person, I'm sorry. Listen to my verses. This music is not just for people who sit in the pews and pray at the churches. <sighs> guy's a great wordsmith. This music is about me and my struggles. That's what he's saying. To understand who I am and for people and the fans who have lived my life and I have lived your life. When you hear this song, it's therapy for him and therapy for the audience. That's why the comments are so strong with him because they're, they're expressing how they're feeling through the comments. The song is the opening, the music is the opening, but when they leave these comments by the thousands, they're saying, this is my connection to you, Nate. This is how I understand your music better because you've talking about your life, which is my life. That's how I see you as connection. We get that all the time with our own videos. That's what people say to us. You connect with me, you connect with me, you relate to me. Then in the outro, I mean, I think sometimes people, the next few lines, I think, I'm, I mean, I think sometimes people, they confuse what I'm doing. I write about life. I write about things that I'm actually dealing with, something that I'm actually experiencing. This is real for me. Like, this is something that personally helps me as well. I totally get him. I totally understand him. And the song and the lyrics, it is real life. And he's saying, I'm trying to figure out who I am this is Nate, a work in progress. Beautiful. This is real for me. I'm actually experiencing this stuff. This is who I am. You're seeing me trying to work through this via the music, via the therapy, and I'm letting you guys understand this is what I'm trying to do. Don't be afraid to try along with me. And finally, the last four lines of the song, like this is where I go. This, this is, that's the whole NF real music thing, man. This is real for me. I need this. This is a therapy for me. He is correct. Him speaking out is his therapy. That's what he's trying to say to you. When you see me on stage, I'm giving you blood. I'm giving you myself. It's not like fake, you know, things that are not relevant, things that are not truthful. This is who I am. Okay. He and his audience are connected by all of the insanity they have both have been through. And helpful therapy helps you make sense of what you've been exposed to. That's what therapy is supposed to do, give you that bridge to do it. To me, he's letting these kids, his fans, a sense of reassurance. When you see the video, in the end, he's always next to him. He's putting an arm around him. He's sitting next to these people who are going through terrible turmoil, letting them know if he can get through it, so can they. To me, he's saying, I found therapy and it helps, and it can help you. Get the help you need and don't suffer in silence like so many people do. That's, it's an anthem therapy session. My only comment is this. The song is perfect. And what am I going to say it's, to add to it? Just a great song, great lyrics, great message, great video. He's a very talented young man. Continue to write great music. And I hope you find peace with your, within yourself and realize you're making a huge impact. Bruce Muffs and LCSW, Sunridge of Nevada.